Now we will perform upper endoscopy in a 62-year-old male patient with epigastric pain. First, put the tip of the endoscope on the patient's tongue. Under direct vision, guide the scope through the mouth. You can see the uvula at the 6 o'clock position. When the epiglottis, the cricoarytenoid cartilage, and vocal cords appear, guide the tip of the instrument behind the cricoarytenoid cartilage and instruct the patient to swallow while you apply gentle pressure just to allow the cricopharyngeal sphincter to be passed. Advance the endoscope slowly to allow careful examination of the esophageal contour and mucosa. Examination of the esophagus ends with inspection of the gastroesophageal junction, with its level being determined in relation to the diaphragmatic hiatus. The red mucosal tongues at the gastroesophageal junction are highly suggestive of short Barrett's esophagus. Now advance the scope into the stomach and align the tip along the longitudinal axis of the stomach by means of a 60 to 90 degrees clockwise talking maneuver. There are certainly many ways of examining the stomach. The important point is to be both systematic and deliberate so as to minimize the amount of unexamined surface area. To this end, our approach in general is to observe the stomach in detail after, rather than before, the duodenum has been examined. So let us first move to the duodenum. The pylorus is examined closely, with particular attention being given to its motility during peristalsis. Now intubate the duodenal bulb by advancing the tip of the scope as closely as possible to the pyloric ring and then applying gentle pressure. At this stage, the patient may experience a little discomfort. Successful intubation results in a red-out appearance due to the tip of the instrument being applied closely to the mucosa of the anterior wall of the bulb. After the proximal bulb has been entered by the pyloric channel, stop and wait until sufficient air has been given to inflate the bulb. Inspection of the bulb is carried out using advancing and withdrawing movements. At this stage, the scope may often return into the gastric cavity. To overcome the sharp enteral angle and reach the vertical part of the duodenum, place the tip of the scope at the end of the bulb. Now angle the tip right and upward by turning the small wheel forward and the large wheel backwards and rotate the scope 90 degrees clockwise while gently advancing the scope. You usually find the papilla at the 11 to 1 o'clock position. After the duodenum has been completely examined, withdraw the scope and examine the stomach in detail. We start with the antrum. The antrum is recognized by the absence of longitudinal folds. Examination of the antrum begins with careful inspection of its entire distal portion, using arc-like talking movements.
Within the gastric body, continue the arc-like movements until the junctional area between the body and the fundus is reached. This is recognized by the appearance of the gastric lake, which, due to the elevation of the patient's head, is seen in the distal fundus just above its junction with the body. Once the upper gastric body is reached, we prepare examination of the cardia and fundic area by means of retroflexion. Deflect the tip upward and insert the endoscope blindly until the cardia and fundus are seen. Now withdraw the instrument in the retroflexed position for short distance while maintaining continuous air insufflation. We pull the tip of the endoscope inside this hernia and perform a 360 degree rotation, both clockwise and counterclockwise, to complete the retroflexed view. This maneuver allows close inspection of the short Barrett segment. After examination of the cardia and fundus in retroflexion, return the endoscope tip to the original position in the upper body. Withdraw the endoscope with arc-like movements to examine the upper body and cardia. At the end of the procedure, before you withdraw the instrument from the stomach, always make sure to aspirate as much air and gastric components as possible to deflate the patient's abdomen. Back in the esophagus, we recommend withdrawing the endoscope slowly to allow, once more, careful inspection on the way out.